okay, if I think too much about this, I'm gonna overthink it, and if you ask me tomorrow, I may have a completely different order, but this is what we're gonna go with today. Hey guys, it's Kelly. I am here <laughs> with my uh, ranking video. Ranking all of the palettes that I tried in 2023. I do have 21 palettes, I believe, sitting in front of me. I did technically have a 22nd palette like on its way to me, but I'm not going to be trying that palette until 2024, so we'll throw it in that video. So 21 palettes to talk about today. I am going to rank them from least favorite to most favorite, and let's just jump in. Wish me luck. Okay, in last place in the 21st spot, and honestly, a palette that I a palette that I probably will not keep in my collection for much longer. It is my Odin's Eye Singles. In the beginning, I want to say like January of this year, Odin's Eye launched some of their single shadows. I purchased the palette and a few singles, and honestly, I just didn't love the quality. I found that they were a little bit tricky to get onto my eyes. I tend to have to use my finger over a brush. I get a lot of fallout, and they're just not my favorite, and since since trying them in the beginning of the year, I've never reached for them. They just kind of sat in a drawer. So I have to say I don't love the formula of those singles and I'm considering it one palette since I have five shades that I just put together, but definitely not a favorite for me this year. Hopefully I don't mess up the numbers, but in the 20th spot, also from Odin's Eye, is the Jewels and Gems palette. Now when I purchased this, I purposely went with this color story. They released the this one's Jewels and Gems, so what, Stone and Rock, which was the more green-toned eyeshadow palette. I went with this one because of the color story. I knew that I didn't have a ton of, like, blues and purples in my collection, and I thought, you know what? If I'm going to purchase one of these palettes, let me pick one that I don't have repeated in my selection already multiple times over. So I went with this one, but again, I found that I just didn't love the shimmers in this formula. I thought the mattes were great, they performed well, they were super blendable, but a lot of these shimmers were, again, very difficult for me to get from the pan onto my eyes. I needed to use my finger, that's not my preferred method of applying shadow, I much prefer a brush. A lot of them had a ton of fallout and they were just very sparkly and glittery. And honestly, I haven't used this since testing it out. I've thought about decluttering it, I probably will at some point, but again, I just love the Odin's Eye packaging. I think it's so stunning, like there's a person here, she's beautiful, the colors, I really do enjoy the color story here, I just, I didn't love this palette the way that I wanted to. So for that reason, that is why it is in the 20th spot. Coming in at number 19 is one that I received in PR. I did purchase the two Odin's Eye palettes. I received the ColourPop Heavy Metal in PR, and I got this when I went to Charleston for the Creators and Friends Retreat in May. ColourPop was one of our sponsors. This was one of the palettes that they threw in our bag. I do like the ColourPop formula. I have several of their palettes. I've enjoyed them over the years. I think this one may be a pressed glitter. If I'm not mistaken, it looks kind of like a, a pressed glitter in Thrive, which is not my favorite. I just honestly have not really reached for this a ton. I tried it a few times, like while we were in Charleston and when I got back. I don't think the quality is bad. Some of the shades are super fun, but it's just not a color story that I reach for. So I don't think it's bad quality by any means, but it definitely is not one that has gotten a ton of use from me this year. So that's why I had to put it toward the end. In the number 18 spot is another one that I purchased from Nomad Cosmetics, and it is the Oke okay Van Gogh Safari Palette. I was excited when I saw this one from Nomad because I thought this is a Kelly color story. We have a ton of neutrals. We have some greens in there. If I'm going to play with color, it's going to be a purple or a green. And so I thought that this looked like the perfect palette for me when I purchased it and tried it out. Again, the mattes are great. Just like I said with Odin's Eye, I find the mattes are super pigmented. They're easy to blend. I get beautiful like color variations when I'm putting them together. But but the shimmers are just lackluster for me for the same reason as the Odin's Eye. Now the Odin's Eye, I would say, are definitely a lot more glittery and sparkly. These ones are a little bit more muted, but again, I have to use my finger to apply them. I can get some fallout with them, and I just haven't found myself reaching for this palette, although I thought that it was a color story that I was going to love and appreciate. 
I'm just not reaching for it. So again, that is why it is toward the back of the pack there. I probably should have put sticky notes on these or something, but in the number 17 spot is the Allie Dawson collab. Allie came out with the Falling in Love, Falling for You? Falling for You. Falling. This is the Falling in Love palette. Is it the Falling in Love collection or Falling For You collection? Either way, the Falling in Love palette, I did purchase her collaboration. I wanted to support her. I thought the color story was fun for the fall, and it is. It's a great fall color story. For me, though, these just aren't colors that I'm going to reach for on a day-to-day -day if I'm trying to like get ready for work or go out with the kids. It's not like a quick and easy look for me. So while I felt like it it was fine. The quality was good. I like the shimmer. It's a beautiful like neutral shimmer. You can kind of create a nice fall look with this. It's a great fall palette, but it's just that, a fall palette. So for me, that's why it is toward the back of the pack. I believe that was 17, so I think now we are on to 16. This was another palette that was gifted to me in PR. It is the Unearthly Don't Be Jelly palette. Now this one I did also receive at the Creators and Friends trip in Charleston, and this one, definitely not a Kelly color story, okay? If you look at these shades, like, this is not my typical everyday go-to look, but the shimmers. The quality of the shimmers in this palette is just impeccable and amazing. They are shifty, they are beautiful, they are pigmented. They have a lot of shine and sparkle, but not chunks of glitter that fall all over my face, which I really appreciate. So when I'm thinking of this palette, I'm typically thinking of the shimmers and dipping into the shimmers. I don't have mattes in this palette that I would typically reach for. They are a lot brighter and bolder. I go in with other mattes and then I will reach in for the shimmer shades but the shimmers are definitely a standout for me and I really love the unearthly shimmer formula. In the number 15 spot another palette that was gifted to me at that same creators and friends retreat by Colourpop was the Bare Necessities palette and I did use this palette a ton when we were in Charleston because anybody else keep these plastic inserts I always keep them because it has a wide variety of neutrals. This is definitely a a literal bare necessities palette, okay? It is your necessities. The shades that if you are like me and you are a neutral gal, these are the shades that I tend to reach for. The reason why this is in the 15th spot, because I think the formula is great. Again, I like their shimmer formula. I like the mattes formula. We have different rows. We have like a cooler toned row. We have one that's a little bit warmer, a mauve row, the deeper browns, and then like dark and smoky down here. I just don't reach for palettes that are quite this large. This is one that I like having in my collection because I can create a variety of looks with it and all of the looks that I create are looks that I would love and that I would wear time and time again, but it's just such a large palette and I don't reach for large palettes that often. So this is a good one. I enjoy having it in my collection, but it's a little bit bigger than I'm going to reach for on a day today. Coming in at 14, now all of these, as we're working our way down from 14 down, these ones I do generally enjoy the formula. I was ranking these based on color story, and this is a perfect example because I love the Lunar Beauty formula. This is the Lunar Beauty Siren Sunset palette. I think the formula of Lunar Beauty is absolutely amazing. I've tried several of Manny's palettes now, and I just love them. But for me, this color story is a little bit deeper and darker than I would reach for on a day today. The top row, all about me. Starfish, Sea Witch, Coastline, all about me, these three. But when you get over to the greens and the deeper purples and the blues, it has to be, like I have to be in the mood for color when I'm reaching for those palettes. Again, I love Manny's formula. I think the shimmers are amazing. I think the mattes are super blendable and creamy, but like I'm not going to be wearing the Siren shade and Seductress on my eyes like on an everyday basis. It would be more so the top row for me. So that's why it's coming in at the number 14 spot. I mentioned not being impressed with the Nomad OK Van Gogh palette, but another palette that Nomad released this year that did impress me is this one right here. It's the Ghost Town USA palette. This one was gifted to me. I don't remember why I received it. Did I receive it as like a Starfish nomination? 
That might have been what happened. I had it listed in my phone as, as a gift, but I don't remember exactly why it was gifted to me. I would guess the Starfish palette because I don't get PR from Nomad, but I was super excited to try this one because again, we have a variety of neutrals like, and I almost feel like these could be three palettes in one, like a strip of six here, a strip of six here, a strip of six here. But again, you can also mix and match them. We have the greens that I love and enjoy. We have the neutrals that I love and enjoy. I wouldn't really reach for these gray blue shades very often but I do love these two shimmers right here uh, the shimmers in this palette just performed differently for me I felt like the OK Van Gogh Safari palette was a little bit lackluster these performed great I was able to go in with a brush I got a lot of pigment I liked the way that they performed and the mattes were great so that's why this one is coming in at the number 14 spot Coming in at number 12 was another eyeshadow palette that was gifted to me. I received in PR from Sigma, the Beauty and the Beast collection. And I was super duper excited when I got the notification from Sigma that I had this collection coming to me because first of all, the packaging is absolutely stunning, but I really do enjoy the Sigma formula. I think that they have a great mixture of different shimmer shades. They have some that are more toppers. They have some that are more of a satin shade. They have some that give you that wham bam in your face pigment like the My Cherry and Rose Petal, Enchantress, the Be Our Guest, those are going to really pack a punch and be like beautiful bright shimmery shades. Winter's Night is a little bit more of a topper for me. Belle is a little bit more of a satin for me. The mattes really perform great and I just really find this color story intriguing. It's a nice mixture of like neutrals and pops of color. I feel like they really did a great job kind of getting the full vibe of the Beauty and the Beast movie. I really love that movie. It's a classic for me and I was super excited that Sigma sent this my way. I probably would have purchased it if they didn't, but I'm definitely happy to have this one in my collection. Coming in at number 11 is the Resurgence palette. This was a collaboration between my beautiful friend Heather Austin and Unearthly Cosmetics. First of all, Let's just look at this packaging for a minute. Like these beetles are holographic. It's a nice sturdy like cardboard packaging with a magnetic closure right here. That's why I'm doing this. I'm feeling the magnet, but it also is super cute because it opens like a book. It opens like a book. You have a nice big mirror there. And then again, I'm just gonna hold it this way so that I don't blind you. I think Unearthly does shimmers amazingly. Like their shimmers are really the standout for me. I felt like the mattes were great in this palette as well, but it's honestly the shimmers for me. Like this transformation shade is so beautiful and shifty. This creation shade is like that blue brown pigment from MAC. This shade right here in Solar Symbol, it looks peachy right here in the palette, but when you put it next to this pink nymph shade, it just transforms into the most beautiful pink gold. I love this shade right here in Jewel. It is just like the perfect orange but red. The thing that I really love about this palette also is that Heather and Amanda from Unearthly created these mattes to be able to like mix with each other. So you can mix Cosmology and Nymph together to get like a, a beautiful purple shade. I love this Cerambus. It's great in the crease for everything. This Life shade is more of a satin finish. You can mix it with the others to lighten it up, but it's also beautiful on the inner corner and all over the lid. I really think Heather and Amanda did an amazing job when they came up with this palette. It's absolutely beautiful. It performs so amazingly. The only reason why it is in the number 11 spot and not a little bit higher is just because the color story. I tend to be more into neutrals. This is like a special occasion palette for me or a one and done. If I want to reach in here and just put a shimmer all over the lid, these shimmers are great for a one and done. But the color story is why it is ranked at number 11 because the quality is just amazing. The packaging is stunning and I'm so proud of my friend Heather. I think my daughter finally fell asleep. My son's down for a nap and I was trying to get my four-year-old to like lay down because I'm filming this on Christmas Eve and we're going to a friend's house tonight and you know she's probably just gonna be too excited to sleep well at night so I wanted her to take a nap but she was fighting laying down. She's been laying down for about 40 minutes and I think she finally fell asleep. Now we are into the top 10, I believe, I hope, I believe. 
we are in the top 10. And coming in at the number 10 is the palette that I have on my eyes today. And it is from Odin's Eye. This is the Snow Dream palette. When I tried out some Odin's Eye palettes in the beginning of the year, I just kind of felt like, you know, with their singles and with the, the Jewels and Gems palette, they felt a little bit lackluster to me. But as I started trying more and more Odin's Eye this year, the Snow Dream palette, it did really impress me. I've tried it later on in the year, but I did create a three looks video. So that is coming up. And I tried a variety of the shades and I found that there are shades like frankincense and celebrate and hugs and Mary and tinsel that are more of those like very sparkly crumbly shades that you need to apply with your finger they're not gonna pick up on a brush and you're gonna get fallout but that's okay when I know that ahead of time I can use them accordingly and create a beautiful look like this then there are the shimmer shades like tradition and magic and sweater that are a little bit easier for me to manipulate I can pick them up with a brush we still have a ton of shimmer. I have sweater on the middle part of my eye. You still have a ton of shimmer and bang for your buck, but they are a little bit easier for me to navigate. And then the mats are wonderful. I feel like they're very blendable. I can definitely build them up or keep them more of like a sheer wash. And I like the color scheme here. This is one where it's again, a mixture of like colors and neutral shades. It's a good quality palette and I've had fun playing with it. So that's why it's in the number 10 spot. Okay, so 10, nine, eight, seven I kind of mushed them all together because spoiler alert they all are Odin's eye palettes and I found that I like them I enjoy them I'm reaching for them and so I kind of ranked them based on color story in the number nine spot is a collaboration with my good friend Angie and Yella Kniekvist and Odin's eye they did a Halloween collab where they brought Hella back from Angie's Hella palette but in a Halloween version so this is the little ghost palette and the little ghost palette is definitely a Halloween palette. You have the bright purples here. You have the oranges. I love the embossing that Odin's Eye does. I just think their packaging is like, there is no better packaging in my opinion. The, the quality, the colors, the detail that goes into it. I am obsessed with Odin's Eye packaging. I really love using this palette for this cobweb shade. Shade, It's beautiful for the inner corner. I love the skeleton shade to like blend everything out. These purples are amazing. This Boo shade, we were in Vegas for the Creators and Friends holiday party and I looked at Angie's lids one day and I was like, oh my gosh, like what shadow is that? I love it. And she said, well, it's just Boo all over the lid. So I recreated that one day when I came home. So I really love to reach in for that. I don't reach into the oranges or blues a ton, which is why I put it in the number nine spot but I do really enjoy that palette. I am taking the plastic out and putting the plastic in as we go. In the number eight spot is Angie's other collab that came out for Halloween and it's the Trick or Treat palette. I do find that I use this one just a tiny bit more than the Little Ghost palette because if you look at it, we do have like this neutral row. We do have some greens in here, some cranberries. I really like this shade Wicked to kind of set my eyeshadow primer down. This one just feels a little bit easier for me to use because it's a little bit more of like the neutral vibe okay ignore these bright greens right but a little bit more of like a neutral vibe or something that I would reach for more often than the purples I do love to wear a purple shadow because purple is my favorite color but it's not one that I'm reaching for day to day then we have the number seven spot Again, a collaboration between Odin's Eye and my friend Amanda, Makeup Just For Fun. This one is ranking higher than the others, again, for Color Story, because it's all the same great Odin's Eye quality, but this Color Story is a little bit more muted than the ones that you've seen. The ones that you've seen have been wham, bam, in your face, vibrant. This one, we have a little bit more of the muted purple tones. We have a little bit more of the muted green tones. We have a neutral in here. This Dawn shade is great for the inner corner. This Color Story is a little bit safer for me and so it still performs great like all of the other Odin's eye palettes because it is a color story that feels a little safer for me it's made its way a little higher up whoo okay that was a doozy been filming for a while this is why I don't wear my hair down it keeps getting in my way in the number five spot it may surprise you because it's a little bit bolder than my natural taste but it is the Unearthly Sorceress Smoke Palette. I have been raving about indie eyeshadow shimmers. 
the shimmers really do it for me. I've talked about Unearthly, I've talked about the way that the shimmers do it for me, and this one is in the top five spot because I have these beautiful shimmer shades that I think are so stunning. They are just bam, they are in your face, they are giving me what I want to give me, and then again, the wonderful mattes, but this is a little bit more of a neutral color story. Now it's neutral, but it is bold at the same time. You have these fun olivey green shades, you have these fun like peachy, peachy neutrals, these cooler tone neutrals. You have a bright like, is it purple? Is it blue? I don't know. Is it both? It's just, it's fun. You can create a lighter look with it. You can create a deeper look with it. And it's that great unearthly formula. So I've been enjoying this one. I think I may have forgotten to mention as I got down to it, so let me just backtrack for just a moment. Resurgence was sent to me in PR from Heather and Unearthly. I purchased the Snow Dream palette. Angie's palettes were sent to me in PR from Angie and Odin's Eye. I did purchase the Flora Story palette, and then I did purchase the Sorceress Smoke palette. So coming in at the number five spot, these palettes were sent to me. Yes, I'm saying palettes because I'm going to lump them all together, but it's these little Sigma bite size minis. Sigma came out with a, they were like dessert inspired, like French dessert inspired quads. There were six of them. I have five because I gave Smags the peach one. I let her pick which one she wanted. And I love these little quads. I have found lately that I'm into the smaller palettes. That's why I was saying the ColourPop Bare Necessities is great. It's neutral. It's my color story, but it was slower down because it is such a large palette. And on a day today, I'm a teacher. I teach third grade. I'm a mom of two young kids. When I'm trying to get ready and I'm not filming, I tend to reach for smaller palettes like this. So that's why these are higher up. I reach for these a ton. I love the Sigma formula. This one right here is beautiful. This is Creme Brulee. Then we have this Blueberry Parfait great for like a little smoky date night. We have a wonderful fall palette. This is caramel apple if you're into the greens. Then we have this beautiful like mauve quad in bonbon. The one that I get the most out of though is this tiramisu which is like a cool toned neutral. So that was sent to me. Love those ones. Then in the, what number am I? Five, four, three, two, one. Well, somewhere along the line. I messed up my numbers. I messed up my numbers somewhere. I'm not quite sure where, but this would be five. This would be five. And then in the fourth spot. Okay, Kelly, good job. In the fourth spot, Sigma. Angela Bright. This was sent to me as well. I was super duper excited to get this one sent to me because this one surprised me, honestly. I was not planning on purchasing this one because when I look at it, like these are bright, these are bold. And I was like, I just don't think I can do that. I don't think that I can get that bright and bold. And then it was sent to me from Sigma and I tried it out and honestly, like take these four out and this is like, kind of neutral, right? You have a neutral quad there. Okay, a gold. Okay, a green. You have neutrals right here. And this has become a palette that honestly, I reach for all the time because I like to reach in with the bare shade to set my eyeshadow primer. I like to put champagne problems on the inner corner and I like to take bright and put that in my brow bone. So this tends to be a companion palette that I'm reaching for, even if I'm not using it to create my full look. And it really surprised me this year. The Sigma formula did not surprise me, but the color story and how much I love this palette surprised me a little bit. Coming in at the number three spot is my homegirl, Natasha Denona. Natasha Denona has my favorite formula. The mini dream palette is the one that I'm waiting for. I ordered it here in 2023, but I'll be trying that in 2024. Natasha came out with her I Need a Nude and instantly I was like, this is a Kelly color story. So I had to order it. I love the Natasha formula. I've raved about it time and time again. It has to be like my favorite formula. I love everything about it. You have different kinds of shimmers, ones that are more sparkly, ones that are a little bit more of a satin. And this is my color story. I don't think this is my favorite Natasha Denona palette if I were to like put all of my palettes together, but I do really love this one. So that's why it is in the third spot. In the second spot, also from Natasha Denona, it is this mini right here in the mini Starlet. I 
have kind of been hot and cold with these minis. I've been kind of impressed, but not fully impressed. I didn't love the retro the way that I wanted to, but I really love this mini starlet palette because again, when I'm creating a look, this look has a lot of shadows on it because I was filming and creating like a look to go with my video, but on a day today, like it's two or three shadows for me. That's it. Something in the crease, something on the lid, something on the inner corner, maybe something to deepen it out. So that's why this one beat out the I need a nude because in a pinch, in a rush, I'm going to be reaching for this one over that one in the top spot. Let me know what you think it is down below. Do you know my collection? Is there a palette that you're like, Kelly, you haven't talked about this one yet. Like, where is it? Where is it? I should go back and look at what my number one palette was from last year. I should have done that because I don't remember what it was. I don't remember. But the number one palette for this year, or at least for today, the number one palette for today is the Full Fantasy palette, which was a collaboration between Lunar Beauty and Laura Lee. I have not tried Laura Lee's brand, but these shadows perform like Lunar Beauty, like Manny's brand that I have come to know and love. I think the formulas are great. I love that you have a variety of neutral shades. We have like deeper smoky vibes over here. We have some fun golds. We have like the maroon mauve shades that I love, but I really love this Aries shade. This is the palette that I took with me to Vegas when I went to the Creator's Friends uh, holiday party because I was like, you know what? I think I wanna dip into the Aries shade. I think I wanna do some of these mauves. But also we have like the, these fun neutrals. We have some shades that are a little bit sparklier, some that are a little bit more toned down. This has just been a palette that I have come to know and love. I, I like the versatility. I like the variety. I like that it's neutral friendly, but also some pops of color. You can do deep and smoky, but you also have some lighter shades. It's just really been a standout for me. I'm not surprised that it's a Lunar Beauty palette at the top or a Lunar Beauty Laura Lee palette at the top. And I'm not surprised that it's this color story. So that's my number one. Whew. Okay. We made it. We made it through. If you counted, tell me how many times I touched my hair. I'm sure it was a lot. I'm sure it was a lot. But this was a fun video. Like I said, I just try to keep it lighthearted because I'm someone who could really deep dive and then like become like, obsessed with the order of my palettes. But like literally, it could be different tomorrow. If you asked me to film this tomorrow, it could be different. If you asked me to film it a month ago, I'm sure it would be different. If you asked me to film it in a month, I'm sure it would be different. But it's just lighthearted fun. It's just all in good fun. Makeup is fun. So that is going to do it for this video. I would love to know your thoughts in the comments down below. What were your favorite palettes that you tried or favorite palette that you tried this year? I would love to know. Are you familiar with any of these? I just love makeup. I love makeup. I love eyeshadow. I brought in a lot this year with 21 palettes, but you know what? I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it. So that's going to do it for this one. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.